we already called a meeting to order and got most of the business done. Well, that's great. <laughs> now we're going to do it for real. <laughs> so we just had a practice time. Oh, okay. Uh, um, Keith, are you there? I am. Oh, okay. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I was I was suffering from a pretty bad migraine earlier, but it's eased up on me a little. Okay, that's good. Do we have Carol Briggs on the line? Okay. You, okay. I want everybody to stay on the line. This is the court reporter, so I'm gonna have to call her. Okay. So just hold on. Cody, she huh? cannot get through on the 800 number. She'll have to call the 615-253-0011 connect. Okay. Thank you. Hold on. Remind them to. Uh, is this Carol? This is Cody Vest. Uh, Carol, you're going to need to uh, call in on 615. I think this is about as organized as the Hawaii. Pardon? <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to hang up and let you call on through. Everybody's waiting. All right, thank you. Uh, Brent wanted me to remind everybody to try to mute all your background noise as well. Yes, we're going to close the door. The court reporter of court is on the tele, trying to call in too. Hello, this is Carol Briggs. Uh, Carol, this is Cody. You're on. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Now, before we get started, let me remind all board members and ourselves it's just Ashton and myself here. Uh, we have to identify ourselves. I don't believe I've worked with Carol Briggs before, so she's not going to know your voices. So before you speak or as you speak, please identify yourself. You may spell the last name. Uh, yeah, and you might want to. Well, I'll, I'll do it when I call the roll. Vivian, are you ready to start? Yes, ma'am. Well, we're going to try this. Let's just go ahead if you are. Okay. Now, hold Good just, morning, everyone. Go ahead. Hold, hold, just, hold just a second. She can what about it. the recording? Didn't he already said it? Hello, am I still connected? You are. Yes, you're still connected. We're trying to make sure. We're making sure our video recording video is, is working. recording is working. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's just go ahead, Vivian. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday, January the 17th, 2018 Alarm Systems Contractors Board Meeting. We're going to call the meeting to order. Ms. Vest, will you please call the roll? Thank you. Now we'll be spelling the names for the court reporter. Scott Coffcroft, C O C K R O F T. Here. Keith Harvey, H A R V E Y. Here. Vivian Hickson, H I X S O N. Here. Karen Jones. Ken Roberts, R O B E R T S. Here. Let the record show that Karen Jones is not in attendance, but we do have a quorum, and we are doing this telephonically. Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. I think does Ashley need to read into the record the fact that we're doing this by phone? 
Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, just for the court reporter's sake, my name is Ashley Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. I'm going to read the statement of necessity. This is an emergency scheduled meeting of the Tennessee Alarm Systems Contractors Board, which is taking place in conference room 1B of Davy Crockett Tower in Nashville, Tennessee. Notice of this meeting was posted to the board website on January 11th, 2018. As there is not a physical quorum present, a statement of necessity will be read into the record and filed with the Tennessee Secretary of State as required by statute. Pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 8-4-108B2, which states if a physical quorum is not present at the location of a meeting of a governing body, then in order for a quorum of members to participate by electronic or other means of communication, the governing body must make a determination that a necessity exists. That determination must include a recitation of the facts and circumstances on which it was based. Further, Tennessee Code Annotated 8-44-108A3 defines necessity as matters to be considered by the governing body at that meeting requiring timely action by the body, the physical presence by a quorum of the members is not practical within the period of time requiring action, and that participation by a quorum of the members by electronic or other means of communication is necessary. This is the emergency scheduled meeting of the Tennessee Alarm Systems Contractors Board. The purpose of this meeting with members attending by teleconference is to discuss the agenda as posted to the board website. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Vivian Hickson speaking. We need a roll call vote to either review and adopt the agenda for today's meeting. Ms. Fest. Scott Cockroft? Yes. Keith Harvey? Yes. Vivian Hickson? Yes. Ken Roberts? Yes. Motion carries. We actually didn't have a motion. I'm sorry. You're correct. Will someone make a motion so this will be official? So move. Ken Roberts has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Keith Harvey, second. Now, Ms. Beth, let's call the roll and make it official. I'm sorry. Thank you. That's okay. Scott Crockroft? Yes. Keith Harvey? Yes. Vivian Hickson? Yes. Ken Roberts? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. The agenda for today's meeting has been adopted. Um, next on the agenda is the education report. Ms. Best, I'll defer to you on, on the course review and then a motion to approve. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe every, all the board members should have already received all the information. And I did understand that uh, whenever this information was sent out, it did not get assigned to anyone. So I called Mr. Roberts last night, yesterday evening before I left. So, Ken, did you have an opportunity to look at these courses? Yes, I very carefully reviewed all five of the courses that were submitted. Okay, I have okay. a, I have a question, if Ken. Yes. On the uh, tr the first one, the uh, ESA troubleshooting service and maintenance online, the one for sixteen hours. Yes. They didn't ask for what? Is it for employee training or continuing education and what classification? Well, I, I noticed that, and um, uh, I assume that it was for continuing education since there was not anything else marked. I, had this, I reviewed these also, and I had the same question about it because there's nothing marked in either category as there is in others. All right, so what categories, do Ken, do you feel that like this would be appropriate for continuing education? Well, uh, continuing education, we don't really categorize. Okay. So that's probably why they left it blank then, and just forgot to put continuing education on it. I assume that was the case. Right. Okay, then uh, the next one was with ESA closed technicians techniques to efficiently close the deal. And they asked for continuing education for one hour. That's correct. One hour continuing education. All right. 
Uh, then we had the alarm monitoring services incorporated build revenue with tools you already have. They requested two hours of continuing education. Yes, that's correct. Two hours of continuing education. Next one was alarm alarm monitoring services incorporated false alarms reduction for installers and owners and they had asked for two hours of continuing education yes that's correct they requested two hours of continuing education All right then we had the last one was jade learning llc home security and technological Technological. T thank you. Advances, four hours of continuing education. And they asked for employee training. Oh, I didn't notice that as employee training, but I don't see that as a problem. If it's employee training, then it should be categorized. All right. Then will they hit all four classifications? I would think they would be reasonable. So if, if you would like, uh, I will make a uh, or offer a motion that we approve these five courses that I think has just been read into the record uh, for the hours that they requested. Fine. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Roberts to approve these courses as presented and read into the record. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Harvey. All in favor, or Ms. Vest, please call the roll. Scott Cockroft? Yes. Keith Harvey? Yes. Vivian Hickson? Yes. Ken Roberts? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, before we go any further, Madam Chair, I am sorry for the court reporter. My name is Cody Vest. I am the executive director. It's C O D Y. Last name is V-E-S-T. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is consideration of petition for a declaratory order. Ms. Thomas, can you please explain to the board members what this means? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> on December 21st, um, the Beacon Center of Tennessee submitted to uh, Commissioner McPe Mix McPeak, as well as the Attorney General's Office, uh, the petition that I provided to you all prior to today's meeting so you could have a chance to review. In that petition, they are asking for a formal administrative hearing uh, for a declaratory order uh, regarding their client system and whether or not it is defined as an alarm system. Um, the reason it is on today's agenda for discussion by the board um, Pursuant to the Uniform Administrative Procedures Act, the board as the the decider in, in this industry, they have to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to grant that hearing. Um, today, only the only thing you need to decide is whether or not you're going to give them the hearing. Um, from there, if you decide to give them a hearing, of course, we will try to schedule that formal administrative hearing. We'll, we'll try to set it for February 22nd. That way we can have it at the next scheduled meeting. If you deny it, um, the Beacon Center and their client, they do have additional remedies they can pursue uh, through Chancery Court um, and try to get a declaratory judgment from a judge in Chancery Court. But we have to bring this to you first pursuant to the UAPA. So I wanted to get this before you all for discussion so that we can let the Beacon Center know and they can proceed one way or the other. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thomas. Uh, this is Kim. This Ken Roberts, uh, Ms. Thomas, do you have a recommendation uh, with regards to um, the uh, question of a hearing? Um, so I, I will say that if you deny this, this petition um, and, and the Beacon Center goes to Chancery Court, there are a couple of things that can happen in Chancery Court. That judge can send the, send the matter back to you all and order you to to grant him that administrative hearing and issue that declaratory judgment or that judge in chancery court can make the decision as the finder of fact um, he could have the hearing up there he or she could have the hearing up there and decide whether or not this particular system that's listed in the petition is in fact an alarm system requiring licensure so if that's something that the board feels they need to be the ones to make that decision on i think the the safer option would be for you to grant the hearing Okay. 
if this does go to chance record, this is Vivian Hickson speaking. If this does go to chance record, will you or some of the staff attorneys that are well versed with the TCA and um, the portions that are required for an alarm systems contractor, will you be presenting this case or it will be somebody else? Uh, yes, ma'am. If, if this case, if the board denies it and it goes to chance court and the decision is made to have the hearing there, um, in addition to the disciplinary counsel for your board and the attorney general's office, they will, will combine their efforts and, and represent your side at that hearing. Um, but if you have the hearing before you all in February, the Beacon Center and, and their client will be able to present the case to you. And at that point, you can ask any additional questions and what they're wanting in the declaratory order is just they want it formalized whether or not this is an alarm system that requires licensure. I'm sure you've read the petition. You know that this this particular individual has been before the board before they came before us last year um, and there was some informal discussion on it. And so now this petition has been filed asking for a formal hearing to issue a formal order uh, showing the board's decision as to whether or not his system is in fact an alarm system. If we have this formal hearing and the board still feels that it is an alarm system, will it still go to transfer court after that? What is their remedy if we still say no? Well, the declaratory order, I'm sure that there are appeal rights to it, um, but they just want a decision one way or the other so that they know where to go from there. I think at that point, it would be up to that company to decide whether or not they, they want to pursue licensure. Uh, they could probably petition, um, file an appeal on, on your decision, but the declaratory order is usually to make sure, to, to have clarity as to whether or not um, that system is an alarm system. Okay, thank you. What is what is the what is the opinion of the other board members on this matter, Madam Chairman? I I would offer a motion. This is Ken Roberts would offer a motion that uh, we grant the uh, requested hearing. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Roberts. Do we have a second? Second. And a second by Mr. Harvey to offer them a formal administrative hearing to be held on February the 22nd, 2018. All in favor of voice by saying aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call. Uh, yes. Scott Cockroft. Aye. Keith Harvey. Yes. Vivian Hickson. Yes. Ken Roberts. Yes. Motion carries, Madam Chair. So y'all will take care of scheduling them for the hearing. Will there be an administrative judge or is this a different type of formal hearing? Um, it, it is handled the same way a formal hearing is. So it will be before you all, we will make sure that the ALJ is scheduled, the administrative judge is scheduled. Um, we'll have a court reporter. It, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly how much business uh, the board will have in February. It's our hope to have it at the end of that meeting. If not, we'll try to schedule it the next day, I'm assuming. Um, but at that point, again, the Beacon Center will present their case to the board. If uh, the department has a response to what their what their argument is, it'll be made at that time. And then, of course, the board can ask any questions, and then we'll have to issue an order uh, and answering the Beacon Center's question about the alarm system. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, do y'all have any more questions for Ms. Thomas on this matter? Okay. Ms. Best, is there any more business that the board needs to consider while we're in session? Uh, no, ma'am. That's all we have on the agenda. Okay. Ms. Thomas? I'm, I'm good, Ms. Ms. Hickson. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any more business before we adjourn? Okay. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carol, can you stay on the line, please, for just a moment? We're going we're gonna to turn off the recording. Uh, give me your...